First it was an earthquake, then came an eclipse, and then Marjorie Taylor Greene said, God is sending America strong signs to tell us to repent. I don't really know about that because I think natural disasters are just natural disasters, but who am I? I don't know, especially compared to my next guest. Bring him in, Neil deGrasse Tyson. He is a renowned astrophysicist, um, a best-selling author, and the most beloved nerd in America. Thank you so much. Okay, I appreciate thank you. It. Thank okay, you. So, so what comes next? Is it locust? Are we, is this end times when you have all of that? Well, the cicadas are coming. This, There's going to be a trillion wait, cicadas. Wait, is it c cicada, cicada, tomato, tomato? Yeah. I, I'm from Louisiana. I say cicada. So, I'll go with you. But cicadas go are coming. Yeah. Okay. And that's this summer, like in the next few months. I, I have a podcast. We did a whole episode on this. We have a colleague of mine who's a specialist in just that form of invertebrate insects. You know when I knew it was time to go home? What? When I would hear the cicadas, we would call them crickets. We got, and I'm sure they're not crickets, but that was we were, They're not the same that's, thing. I know, that's yeah, what we Cricket is a cricket, well, this, and a cicada But we would hear, you'd hear them, for some reason they would seem to get louder around dusk, I don't know why. Yeah, and, and yeah. We, they're and, trying to find a mate. Is that what's happening? Yeah. That's what I'm told. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, where, where are we now? Because we did have an earthquake in New York, which was rare. Yes, right? rare, rare at that magnitude. It was almost five, yeah. well, it was 4.7 in Jersey. I felt it, you know, I saw everything shake and shake and bake. And I checked with my colleagues at the American Museum of Natural History, who specialize in plate tectonics, and based on circumstantial reporting, because the scale wasn't formalized until more recently mm -hmm. than the information we have, the last earthquake of that magnitude in New York was 150 years ago. So it's a 150 year event. I thought that was always happening under the surface and we just didn't. Oh, earthquakes it. happening all the time somewhere in the world. You should see the daily earthquake map. You right. just watch them happen. And most of them are happening in the rings of fire. Yeah. And the, where the continental plates meet. So, so it, it's just rarer for New York because we're not in the ring of fire. Yeah, but it's a little unnerving when you all these buildings and you have all of these people and then all of a sudden the buildings start to shake and you look up and you know what I mean. It didn't shake that badly. It didn't. But no. still, I felt it. I said, "This is, it's not more than a five, <laughs> and and, and the, the scale is like exponential. Yeah. So if you go from five to six and six to seven, then you, stuff starts falling down." We were all on a Zoom call here for work, and I said, "Wait, did you? Is this an earthquake? Are we in the middle of an earthquake? Does your house or wherever you are?" And everyone said, "Yeah, I felt it." Yeah. So do, it's not. You don't think these things are um, as the our illustrious Congresswoman says. Uh, a sign from God, God is sending us signals that America needs to repent. Uh, there are earthquakes around the world all the time, <laughs> especially up to level five. I mean, this is, so uh, if, you, if, if she knew more geology, maybe <laughs> she wouldn't be saying that. I, I don't <laughs> That's the kind, you're being kind. No, you're no, trying to be I'm kind. I'm just saying, the, the less you know about science, yeah. the more prone you are to ascribing things that happen to, to destiny, or divine intervention, yeah. or magic, or something mysterious. And as a scientist, our whole job in life, what we do, all we do, is explore the natural world and come up with an understanding of how and why things are the way they are. And upon doing so, so many previously uh, mysterious phenomenon just fall by the wayside. It wasn't that long ago you'd fall to the ground writhing and frothing and go back, you know, a couple hundred years. Oh, that is exactly what you think would happen if the devil occupies your body. Instead of you just having a seizure. So what, but we don't know that yet. So, so you go, so what do you do? You go to the church. Well, you live in a small town. The church is not that far away. Right. You go get the priest. It puts on the robe, gets the holy water, come, and how long does a seizure last? 10 to, minutes yeah. to 30 minutes or so? Just the amount of time to go get the priest, bring him back, do the holy water thing, and then the symptoms subside. Yeah, the priest is getting the devil out of your body until we learn something about the human brain. Now, no one says that. No, no educated community says that. They take you to a hospital yeah. and they have medicines for it. <laughs> so, you... so and it reminds me of Ben Franklin. He was what, the world's most famous scientist in his day. He's not remembered here as that. He's remembered as a founding father. He wrote a book, Experimental Researches into Electricity. Mm -hmm. 
right? This, it's, a, it's a thick book, published early 1800s, okay. He invents the lightning rod. Mm -hmm. What's happening before that? In any city, what's the tallest structure back then? In any city? Back then. Well, what was a building or a bridge or a tree, no? In any city? <laughs> Let's try that again. A church. In Christendom. A church. <laughs> okay, okay. Fine. The steeple on the church. That, yes, yes. Okay, the church is the tallest structure in any city. What is the most susceptible to a lightning strike? The tallest structure. Right. Okay, so lightning would be taking out churches left and right. And if you were the other church that wasn't taken out, yeah. you had good argument for saying, God was on. God, God. <laughs> you, you're worshiping the, the wrong way. Okay. What do you say? Are you, are you making a statement about religion? No, what I'm saying is Ben Franklin then invents the lightning rod, right. which does two things. It dissipates charges right. Channels back into, into right. dissipates charges that build up under your structure that would otherwise be part of the lightning strike, and it sends them back into the air without the benefit of lightning. So that makes you less susceptible to begin with. And if the lightning strikes, it then directs all of the, the charges through a metal and not through your house. Right. So Ben Franklin does this, and, and so churches are now no longer destroyed by lightning, even if they are hit. And he's accused of heresy, thwarting the will of God. Ah. And I thought, if your understanding of God is someone who, who could be thwarted by this beer-drinking, hot-dog-eating, womanizing guy. <laughs> I don't know if he ate hot dogs, but, but today he would be eating hot dogs, right? He's a hot dog-eating guy. So that's why we have science. It's why the world is less superstitious than it once was. And that and backwards thinking from Marjorie Taylor Greene. By the way, just reminded me, when I was a kid, we had a lightning rod on our house. Do you, did, did they still I, put those on homes? I don't, well, I they should seen one. If, if the home is properly constructed. Yeah, yes, I haven't, should have I a haven't lightning uh, rod. seen one. I'll have to mm -hmm. check it out to see if I have a lightning rod in my mm -hmm. house. So, by, by the way, if your house is not the highest thing around, then it doesn't it's matter. less the lightning's going to hit somewhere else. It doesn't yeah. matter. We had a tin roof growing up. I think we needed a lightning rod. Oh, because you were in the south. I was in the south. Tin roof. Yeah. Oh, my God. But it was a magical. The rain is rain. something, yeah, too. Yeah, it was great. It was really great. Mm -hmm. How was your eclipse experience? Really good. How so? It was good. <laughs> Not good, but good. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's right. It's good, and then it's good. So we were originally, I was bringing my whole podcast to film, Star Talk podcast, and we were scheduled to go to Dallas and to be in the Cotton Bowl. The Eclipse Path went over the Cotton Bowl. Yeah. Can't get more convenient than that. That Cotton Bowl was, was taken over, is that the right term, by NOAA. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, mm -hmm. to do educational programming there. Yeah. Brilliant. And I was checking the weather in advance. It started looking cloudy in Dallas. And then some, a friend of mine called me in Vermont. He said, oh, Neil, I, if you're not doing anything for the eclipse, which is the stupidest opening phrase ever, okay? <laughs> if you're not doing anything for the eclipse, come by my place. And then I, re I was looking at the weather for Vermont relative to Texas. And I said, okay, can I bring a dozen people on my, my production staff? <laughs> so <clears throat> this close friend of mine accommodated me and my production staff. Yeah, so it was great. It worked out. I'm going to listen to just real quick before we move on to, to talk about, I want to talk about uh, climate change and, and, and AI. But when you're talking about these conspiracy theories, right, and how scientists move forward, why do you think, like, take COVID, for example, why do people come up with these conspiracy theories? Why, what's this mistrust in science? Where did that come from? Or where is that coming from? So we, as a species, are remarkable at pattern recognition. We are so good at it that we identify patterns even when there aren't patterns there. That's how good we are. Hmm. We can fool ourselves into thinking there's a pattern. And as a result, and this is deep in us, it's deep. So as a result, if you see events like this event, this event, and that event, you have an urge to de declare that there's some pattern there. There's some purpose. There's some connectivity. You, we need to believe that, even when it's not true. And <clears throat> when you look at, when you look at uh, conspiracy theories that have emerged, this is evidence of this urge that we have as human beings. So I have some compassion for them. 
because it's kind of not their fault. We're just good at pattern recognition. It's kind of not their fault. It's kind. Whose fault is it? Well, okay. So, the fact that people can walk around declaring Earth is flat, yeah, or declaring anything that's just you know aliens are like walking among us. The fact that they can declare that publicly, okay, is evidence of two things. That we live in a country with the free speech, mm -hmm. and we live in a country with a failed educational system. Mm. Both of those together give us that result. Mm. Now, I want to keep the free speech part. That's what that was. <laughs> you, you, heard, you saw me go. I totally mm. want to keep the free speech mm. part. So, we, so in education, if you look at how science is taught, there's a book, there's the bold-faced words you memorize for the vocabulary part of the exam. You memorize, you know, what is DNA, what is, a, you know, an engine, what, you, what is a, the chemical bond. You memorize all this. Mm -hmm. At no time are you taught what science is and how and why it works. Mm -hmm. So you're left thinking science is the satchel of information that you're handed in this class, in this period, in this semester, and when you're done, you put it over here and you move on. All, all memorized so that you can pass the test. Yes, so you can pass the test. If science were taught as a means of querying nature, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, science is the manifestation of your curiosity. Science is how to bring methods and tools to address your curiosity. And nowhere in a memorized test is curiosity manifested. The mystery of the universe, which I will talk about. You talk about the mystery of the universe, but I would, let's get to some stuff before we get all mystical here. And I appreciate where you're going with this. But it feels like, it feels like we are really beset, right, with a lot of things. We talked about the cicadas, cicadas, or whatever. A lot of threats to our existence. Climate change. Well, wait, cicadas are not a threat I know, to our but existence. I'm just saying. It's there's food so for birds things. for a few months. All right. A, a major and earthquake. And you'll crunch on, you can't not step on them. All right. A major mm -hmm. earthquake or what have you. All mm -hmm. right. So listen, but I'm talking more climate change, mm -hmm. AI, authoritarianism. Elon Musk would say population collapse. I mean, ex existential threats. What, yeah. What do you think is the biggest threat to humanity today? So I want to give a cop-out answer to that, if I may. Okay. Had we conducted this conversation in 1925, okay. go back 100 years, and you asked me, what do I think is the biggest threat? I would say tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. I would say hunger. Mm -hmm. I would say, I give a list of things. Nothing on that list would make anybody's list today. Nothing. So, you ask what I fear most? It's that which we will discover. No, I didn't so say that in the next century, our list will be things that would be more terrifying than anything we could talk about today, but we have yet to discover them and think about what their actual dangers okay, are. That's judge, what I worry okay, about. Okay, Judge, and you're, that's not what I asked. I know it's not, but <laughs> I, that's my answer. I'm saying. So what, I, I, I said, what do you think is the biggest threat? Not what you fear most. Those are two different things, I think. Yes, they are, but the biggest threat may be something we have yet to discover. And I'm, I want to be aware of that possibility. Because we could list the threats today. It's a different list than existed 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 150 years. They're different lists. Yeah, but you have, you have said, you have talked about AI, which you called it a nail in the coffin uh, because, of the rise of auto, because of the rise of deep fakes and so on. Why do you say it's a nail in the coffin? Do you really think AI is that dangerous? Where, and where is it on your list? Oh, oh, yeah, I don't know what coffin you're talking Did I say nail in the coffin? Uh, I, yeah, you said... That sounds like somebody... quote, nail in the coffin. You said artificial intelligence is okay. a nail in the coffin. Okay, but actually, you don't have to read that because I'm sitting here right next no, to you. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I, no, I want to make sure... I, I, I can actually... Speak. No, I want to make sure I, I have the quote. Speak. Forget the quote. And I'm looking for... I don't for, care what the quote is. I am here in person. No, I so understand that. ask me that. about AI. But well, you, just, you just said, did I say that? And I wanted to get the reference to where you said it because I want to be accurate. Go. Okay. So it was, it was something that you tweeted. That's the journalist you coming out. No, that, that, that's, that's, that, that was, you tweeted that. Uh, you said prophecy when AI perfects deep fakes of people, blah, 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 blah. And that's when you went on to say that. And I said nail on coffee? Yeah. I think you said nail. Yeah. Deep fakes. Believe that deep fakes were already in news is fake, blah, blah, blah. But there is. Yeah. Coffin for the internet. 
Coffin mm. for the internet. Yeah, so w right now, there is, I mean, who would have guessed this 20 years ago? Right now, there's content on the inter internet that is true. Yeah. And content that is purposefully false. Right. All right. I have, I think, a good way to assess what is true and what is false. First, you check your bias at the door, right. look at sources, right, right. look at verification of sources, make sure the sources are not just repeated multiple times, so you have 10 different websites, but they're all quoting the same, same information, the source of information. So the fact that there's 10 websites doesn't make it 10 times as true. So you have to, you have to buffer against all of this. Right, all right. right. Until now, there are people who believed the fake news as true. Until now? People still do. Hold on. Okay, until the near future. There are people who believe fake news as true. Right. Yes, the Democrats are eating babies in the basement of the pizza shop right. in Washington, D.C. When AI becomes so good at creating deep fakes, even the people who believe the fake news will no longer believe yeah. that the fake news is true. Right. Because the risk of this fake news being faked is so high that the entire internet will lose its integrity. And it will be buried under the weight of its own... Wow. Of, of its own um, falsities, of its own... And the inability to, to check itself and to... Correct, correct. Because there are people just putting fake information on there because AI can do it. AI can do it like this. At first it was fake voice and a fake image, and fake video. And someone sampled two minutes of my voice and yeah. wrote it to say something. It sounded just like me. Yeah. However, I'm, I'm way more literate than what that person wrote to have AI speak. Mm -hmm. So I knew it wasn't me. So, so, so the, the, you might need other, because all I was doing is sampling my voice, not my literacy, not my education level. Okay, but then what do we do then? Because most people... Yeah, it's the end of the internet. Tombstone. Internet. You think so? 1992 to 2026. You, it's the end of the internet. Then where does information and facts come from? Because everyone... Books! Turns, everyone, and but people. we're going back to books. Maybe. Maybe. Because everyone turns to the internet for information. You want information, you just put it a Google people search will, or a people will recover in the timeline of knowledge, they will recover the true value of an expert. Really? I think that's my prediction. Think about it. You, you don't fix your own plumbing, you hire a plumber right. who has that expertise. Right, right, right. You don't say, well, I have a conspiracy theory that the plumbers are trying to do it, and I, I don't trust the plumber. They say they're an expert, but I, no, you hire the plumber. You, you, you hire someone to fix your car who's an expert at fixing your car. I when, just, when we're going to tell you that humans are warming the planet catastrophically, and it's going to flood the coastlines, you're going to say, oh, I don't choose to not believe that because my political platform doesn't. I'm like, Excuse me? Excuse me? Oh, I found an internet site that says it's all. And so once all of that has turned to rubbish, all you have are the experts. You know what it, it reminds me of when you were saying that? And I, it, I, I oh, think one other I, thing, one other thing. Listen, if you want to think Earth is hollow, yeah. you just type hollow Earth. Hollow Earth. And it'll connect you to everyone else who thinks Earth is hollow. Right. And it'll give you a false sense that that's real. Right. Because so many people, because there's so a many community people. that believes it. That, yeah, there's yeah, a community yeah. for yeah. everything. Correct. But and, the, and, and, and testimony. Oh my gosh, watch, watch, testimony. What is that? It's, I could show you a bar chart of why the product works on my commercial, but I'm not. I'm gonna get a person to say, this is the best product I've ever used, and you're gonna listen to that person and not the bar chart. Right. We, so, you go and buy, and there's a YouTube video, and it says, all the experts want you to think this, but I know the truth. That is irresistible. You're saying, oh my gosh, this person is looking out for me, and these experts have their own, and there's a whole thousands of experts that don't know what they're talking about, and this person does. That is so irresistible. Okay, 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 it's okay. clickbait. And that will all go away once the deep fakes destroy I the internet. I hope you're right about that. Because AI will kill the internet.
I, I kind of hope you're right about it. No, no, not AI. People using AI in these nefarious ways will kill the Two animals. things. Yes. It, it, it reminds me of my grandmother and what older people used to say. When they would say, child, I don't know what to believe, right? And that's what people are going to do. The other thing is, it sounds like you're saying free speech could be the collapse of information or the internet. No, failed education system. Fail, okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Because people also, people have uh, conspiracy theories about climate change. They don't believe that it's real. They believe the people who are telling them that it's not real, rather than what the bar chart says about the difference in climate. Yeah, and th what all conspiracy theorists have in common is that there's some bit of information that's missing that they gap with what they presume is either information withheld from them or they gap it by saying that an establishment is lying to them. And in that way, they continue to believe whatever the hell they want. Wait, say that again. Say it again. Every conspiracy theory, the anatomy of a conspiracy theory is there's a gap in the knowledge base mm -hmm. between here and there. And in order to bridge that gap, they have to do one of two things. They have to say, they have the answer, they're just not telling you. Mm -hmm. Or whatever they're telling you is false. That way they get to believe whatever the hell they want. But doesn't, doesn't there have to be an impetus, someone who is saying, who is triggering them to say, you know what, that's not right, I'm right. Or if, if you dig those people up, they will connect dots in ways that, as I said earlier, is something very deeply within us. And, but coincidence is not, what does it say, coincidence is not causality or something? Yeah, it turns out most coincidences are, co causal, are. are causal. We just don't talk about them, okay? If you lean on a table and it collapses, you'll say, oh, coincidence is not causation. That was a coincidence that was causation, right? Most things that happen in this world, they're, they're, the coincidence is causal for most things. But always remember, that if there's something that's odd or different or not expected, then you have to dig a little deeper and ask, is there it's causal or is it just a coincidence? Okay. And, and you know there are people who walk around the, among us who say, there's no such thing as coincidences. This is. There is. Of course, oh, statistically. <laughs> oh, and, 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 I'm sorry. You got, you got a lot of stuff that you gotta get through. No, but no, no, I, I gotta put I, this out here. Another chapter it, in this book, wait, another chapter, it's called Risk and Reward. And you know what? Our brain does not, is not wired for thinking statistically yeah. about the world yeah. or probabilistically. It's just not. Yeah. And there's an entire industry that has risen up to exploit that fact, and they're called casinos. <laughs> there are people betting in the roulette table seven, like multiple times. I say, why are you betting seven so many times? It's due. <laughs> it's, how do you know it's due? They show the previous rolls, and it's not there in the casino. Right. Okay? It's due. I said, no, it's not doom. Every role is independent of the other. They, have, they can't wrap their head around this. They, and th you know the physics community yeah. was invited to have its annual meeting, the uh, American Physical Society, to have its annual meeting in Vegas after there was a hotel snafu in San Diego. They went to the MGM Grant, back then MGM Marina. Thousands of physicists, the end of the week, headline, physicists in town, lowest casino take ever. They've told to never be invited back to the city. <laughs> it's not that we knew the angles on the betting, we yeah. just didn't bet. Yeah. Because we knew better. Right. Now, grant me one conspiracy theory. Grant me one right now. Oh. Say, I grant you one. Say it. Well, I grant you one conspiracy Say, theory. I grant you I one. I grant you, oh, I grant you <laughs> one conspiracy theory. Okay, here it is. You ready? Yeah. All right. I looked at this. Do you know where state lottery revenue goes? To, it's supposed to go to the education, education system. Education system, okay. So, I looked at the education system, K through 12. Yeah. Nowhere is probability and statistics required in the curriculum. <laughs> no, there's an elective <laughs> as a senior, there's an AP class, but it is nowhere. <laughs> so, 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 because if it were, no one would play the lottery and they wouldn't get the tax revenue. So I should get... That's, I should get rid of my, I have a lottery thing on my cell phone, get rid of it. No. I, actually, I don't like to gamble, I don't like to bet. I just think it's, it's, you know. I'm just letting you know that there are entire industries that are exploiting most people's ignorance. I, and, and it's been said, but it's very harsh. It says, lotto is a tax on all the people who didn't do well in mathematics. Okay. Okay. 
<laughs> my, I, when, we, when we were talking about this sorry, interview, they said, back. Neil, you're going to need notes because these are, these are just topics that I want to cover, by the way. Okay. I just want to make we're sure good. that I get to these topics. We good. So can you settle it for us? Can you settle this for us when it comes to climate change? Settle get the conspiracy theories, what's real and what's not as it relates to climate change. Humans are warming the planet catastrophically. Boom. That's it. <laughs> you hear what he said? <laughs> That, but, that's but, it. But, but, but I, I mean, I, by the way, why do I know that? Yeah. Because I read journals of climate scientists and I look at their conclusions. It's not because I've done the research. It's not the research, the, the firsthand research. I see what scientists are doing because I know what's, what science is and how and why it works. If there were a couple of scientists that had a result that was not verified, the press will jump all over it and say, oh, here's a new result, and that's it. No, no, no. Science only becomes objectively true after it's been verified, and that's how that's our checks and balances to prevent the bias of a scientist from working its way into their results. And we look at all these ways, and then I see this, and I say, oh, my gosh. From uh, uh, In multiple branches of science are all pointing to the same results here, mm. that the CO2 in the atmosphere which traps heat from the sun after it comes off Earth's surface, is warming the planet. We've had the warmest years ever in recent years. Oh, there's an interesting little thing this, just this past year. Mm -hmm. There's an interesting little fact. About the highest temperature. The highest report. temperature yeah. jump ever. It's 38, it, it, 38 degrees. Yeah, right. yeah, it turns out that highest temperature jump came about in part because the anti-pollution campaign has been so successful. Because mm. you know what's happened. Right. When there's pollution in the air, these are the aerosols that can reflect sunlight back into space. Yeah, this is the one that we're talking about. This is a journalist in me. Uh, March 18, 2022, scientists at the Concordia Research Station in, the east, in east Antarctica Plateau documented a remarkable event. It was the highest day um, uh, experience, 38.5 degrees Celsius. In, in so, Antarctica. In, a, in, a, in a Antarctica. That's crazy warm for yeah. Antarctica. Yeah. That's like melting warm yeah. temperatures. Do you realize if the ice sheets in Antarctica and the ice sheets in Greenland melted back into the ocean, the sea levels will rise to the level of the Statue of Liberty's left elbow. Wow. Wow. Flooding That's all coasts. By the way, and, and cities, the greatest <laughs> cities in the world, they're all on the water's edge. Yeah. Historically. All right, so you've settled it. The science. We've no, settled not, it. I didn't settle The science settled it. Well, I, I want you to say, you settled it on this show. Can you grant it on this show that it's settled? I grant me that. Can you bless you, it? I'm communicating to you that the work of climate scientists, their life's work, has arrived at a conclusion that some people in this world are in denial of. Yeah. And that will not bode well for the future of civilization. Okay, well, let's talk about space. Sure. Right? Let's talk about space, the final frontier. Perhaps. The next frontier. The next frontier. That's what I was going to ask you. So, what do you, so listen, um, it's in the hands of two people, uh, really, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, right? And it's all privatized. Do you, are you okay with that? Are you cool with it? Because wait, it wait, used wait. to be, it used wait, to be wait, wait, NASA. Wait, pause. Pause. Wait. Stop. First, you left out, you left out Richard Branson. Okay. Well, Richard Branson. Okay. Wait. And you left out NASA. NASA is going to the moon with the Artemis mission. But isn't that in conjunction with these private folks? It, on occasion, yeah. but not specifically. Not that mission specifically, but their private enterprise. By the way, NASA has been engaged with private enterprise from the beginning. From the beginning. The LEM that landed on the moon was designed and built here in Bethpage, Long Island. Mm -hmm. We're recording this in New York City. Long Island, Bethpage, Grumman Aerospace. The people still walk proud down the street. Their aunt or uncle worked on that project back in the Apollo era. So, so the difference is it was all tax-based funded. Mm -hmm. So that's why the rocket didn't say Grumman on it. It just it said, said NASA. NASA or USA. Right. All right. The moment a private enterprise takes initiative, then they get to slap their own name on it. And yes, this should have been happening decades ago. You think that you you are you are okay with it? You like that private enterprise? I don't itself see in any downside to it. Yeah. Whatsoever. When you say, and by the way, by the way, the private enterprise—they're not leading the frontier. 
just think about it. I remember seeing the headlines when Elon Musk took cargo to the space station. New frontier opens up in the uh, space. Uh, what, what's the future? What role will NASA have? Excuse me? They took cargo to the space station, mm -hmm. which NASA had been doing for 20 years. Mm -hmm. But now you offload it. The same way the post office does not have their own jets. You, you rent space in the belly of Delta Airlines. Yeah. Let, the, let the commercial carrier do it. They'll do it for cheaper and reliably and efficiently. You pick it up on the other side. This, this is a long tradition in this country. How long before there are trips? There are already trips. No, but I mean, for, for private citizens, where we're They're going already, to visit. It's already happening. You, you got $20 million, I mean. you can go. <laughs> <That's not laughs> but you want to go so, somewhere? Okay. Or do you want to go to the moon? That's what I mean. Do you want to go to the moon and Mars? Or, do you, or say, I, people say, you want to go into space? Do you want to go into space? And I say, depends what you mean by space. Mm -hmm. If you mean going up and down, which is what Bezos and Branson do. Right. To me, that's not space. The edge of space. It's not really. Well, do you know how far that is? I'll tell you. If Earth were a schoolroom globe, mm -hmm. Bezos and Branson, in their trips, go the thickness of two dimes above the surface of a schoolroom globe. Mm -hmm. I'm an astrophysicist. I can't call that space. I'm sorry. That's, uh, then, e Elon Musk, he actually goes orbital, okay? So these folks that go up and down, they get four minutes of weightlessness. Elon goes orbital. Mm -hmm. you're, you're weightless the entire time. Mm -hmm. For however many orbits you want, orbit takes about an hour and a half. You know how high up that is? That's a centimeter above Earth's surface, if Earth were the size of a schoolroom globe. So if, as an astrophysicist, you want to put me in a space, give me a destination. Moon, Mars, the beyond. I don't want to boldly go where hundreds had gone before. Don't look at me like that. Look I'm, at how he's looking at me. <laughs> I'm wondering how long before do you think that happens, where we are visiting other planets on a, on, a, on a normal basis where the average person can do it? Well, the Artemis mission is attempting to uh, return to the moon. Mm -hmm. We've already sent an uncrewed mission there. The next one is going to take a crew to the moon, orbit, and come back. The third one, Artemis three, mm -hmm. is going to go to the moon and land mm -hmm. and pitch tent. And this, uh, the South Pole, all evidence points that there might be repositories of water there, which is good, because then you don't have to haul water. And water, if you separate the hydrogen and oxygen, yeah. that's rocket fuel at that point, because when it comes back together, it's highly exothermic, right? So, so, so that's in a couple of years, and it's still expensive to go into space. Elon says he wants you know, colonies on Mars. I don't think that's going to happen as quickly as he thinks, because you need motivation to do it. It's not that we can't or don't know how. Yeah. Somebody's got to write the check. Yeah. So the, the VC meeting with Elon, uh, well, I want to go. I want to go to Mars, and they say, "Well, how much will it cost? Maybe a trillion dollars." Is it dangerous? Yes. Will people die? Probably. What's the return on that investment? Well, there isn't really one. It's a five-minute meeting. Yeah. So, so the government will do it. You know, you know how we'll do it. You know how we'll go to Mars and say, "All oh, that has to happen. China just has to leak a memo." doesn't have to be a true memo. Just leak a memo that they want to put military bases on Mars. Boom, we're on Mars. We're on Mars in okay, 10 months. Okay, this is my, my, my last question. Um, last question? We just began. No. What do you mean last question? No, this is... Okay, <laughs> this, is, this is my last question to you. What are the odds... Uh, you, you don't believe in odds, right? That there no, is... No, probability is a real thing. Okay, probability. That there is another sort of solar system like ours, another planet like Earth, another living beings similar to human beings on Earth. I, I think... Given the diversity of life on Earth in this one experiment that we know of, and other than the branch in the tree of life known as the great apes, mm -hmm. that would include us and gorillas and chimpanzees, we're very similar to one another. We have all the same bones and muscles and this sort of thing. That's a very narrow part of the entire tree of life. To suggest, and by the way, if Anything could have happened to snip that branch in the tree of life, and we'd have no apes at all. Some, th there could have been a turn of events that, w that could have taken us out. And so to suggest that on another planet, whatever life does is going to ha have a humanoid anything, mm -hmm. I think is unrealistic. Mm -hmm. If being humanoid was so likely, then it would have happened multiple times in the tree of life. And it's happened only once. 
So I think what's more likely is we'll find a planet that has bacteria. We have bacteria on Earth for billions of years. Yeah. Billions of years. Just bacteria. Single-celled life. Single-celled life. You want to bet on something? Bet on single-celled so life. what we have here is precious and unique. What we call intelligent life, manifested by the great apes and other big-brained creatures, uh, may be unique um, because Earth is full of other life forms that has none of that. But what's to stop another planet from having a branch in its tree of life that looks nothing like us, but is supremely intelligent relative to us? That their intelligence to us might make us look like worms to them. Worms to us or we to them, right? We, we, the audacity of us to say, let's search for other intelligent life in the universe. That implies we're intelligent. Yeah. You know what will happen? <laughs> Alien will come and say, oh, I heard there's interesting biodiversity on Earth. They go to their travel catalog. Let's go visit Earth. And they say, oh, there's this one species there. We hear they're dominant. They're called humans. Let's check them out. Are they all the same, spe same species? And they come down and say, wait a minute. They're, they've drawn artificial lines in their continents and you can't cross unless you have papers and, and the, people are killing one another because they worship different gods or no gods or they have different skin color or they sleep with different people or they have different cult. They're harming one another? Is that really what's happening down there on, on this planet that looks so beautiful from space? What's going on? So I think those aliens will rush back home and report that there's no sign of intelligent life on Earth. <laughs> Thank you. You're amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> Thanks for watching The Don Lemon Show. Make sure you click on the image in the top right to subscribe to my channel and the thumbnail in the bottom right to watch more content from my show. And I'll see you next time.